Well, in this video, I'm not gonna talk about these guys. Instead, I'm gonna talk about another one of my favorite topics, and that's wild wolves. Plus. Conservation and the reintroduction that's coming to Colorado. Say hi, Luna. Over the past year, I've been attending some of the Colorado Stakeholders Group meetings who are coming up with the plan for the state's reintroduction. Proposition 114 was passed into law, so wolves will start being brought back into the state by the end of 2023. I've not only attended some, but I've actually spoke at some too. I must say I'm kind of disappointed at the makeup of this group. It's heavily weighted with rancher and hunting outfitters and they actually don't have a lot of knowledge about wild wolves. There are about five or so members who do know about wolves and want things to go well for them, but they are outnumbered in the decision-making process. The ranchers in the group have gone on endlessly about how they will be paid for wolf livestock predations and are trying to make it as easy as possible to do so. Keep in mind though that wolves actually only account for less than 1% of livestock loss in wolf states. They also want to be able to kill wolves whenever they see them as well around their livestock. So there is still way too much back and forth on this and not near enough discussion on non-lethal methods, which have found to work much better than just killing. Also, we the taxpayers have paid and enlisted some of the top wolf professionals in the country to aid in the process, but I don't see where these experts are even being utilized. Proposition 114 does say that ranchers will be compensated for livestock loss, but a lot of times wolves will not be the cause of that cow or sheep's death. Another stipulation of Prop 114 is that wolves are to be brought in as a non-game species. That means they are not to be hunted. However, Colorado Parks and Wildlife Director Dan Prinslow who is currently on suspension for making a racist comment to a black employee, has told the stakeholders group to come up with some kind of recommendation for a wolf hunt. We now know that states can't manage wolf hunts very well at all, and when they allow them, they quickly get out of control, and we end up with a slaughter. Prinslow obviously doesn't have the best judgment and could be opening the doors for future lawsuits, as people of Colorado did not vote for wolves to be brought in and hunted. In fact, only a tiny fraction of the population supports hunting wolves at all. A recent study from the University of Wisconsin shows that wolf hunts only increase wolf poaching and does not promote tolerance as was once claimed. If you follow the news about the wolf hunts in Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and Wisconsin, you know what I mean about states not being able to handle wolf hunts. As far as increasing elk populations by hunting wolves, this has been shown to statistically not be happening. In fact, elk populations continue to rise in all these states, and Idaho just had a near record elk hunt in 2020. Generally speaking, prey actually drives predator populations, not the other way around. I mean, when you think about it, if the predators don't have no food, they ain't gonna stick around. Some elk hunters and even the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation say that wolves have decimated the famous Lolo herd in Idaho. However, Idaho fish and game biologist John Horn pointed out in this video put out by Colorado Parks and Wildlife that the herd had been crashing since the 1980s, long before wolves were reintroduced because there is a habitat problem there. He shows this graph that shows wolves once established themselves, they didn't even change the trajectory of this curve showing the elk's fast decline. They basically had little effect on this herd. Also retired Idaho fish and game biologist Ted Chu stated that most Western elk states have more elk than they know what to do with, including Colorado. I don't see wolves having a significant negative impact. 
Now, you do have at times what is called a predator pit or predator sink, where a predator is causing a decline in prey populations, but this is fixed by surgically removing some of the predators, but also these pits are usually caused more by habitat than the predators. And if things aren't fixed with the habitat, well, you know what that means. Plus, the science shows they not only take out mostly the sick and the old, they also take out the smaller calves, which gives the larger calves an even greater chance of reaching maturity. This is also talked about in the Colorado Parks and Wildlife video. So actually, these smaller elk calves fall into the compensatory mortality range. Translation, they're most likely to die sooner than later. Now, it is pretty much accepted that wolves take out the sick and the old, but what about CWD? Most biologists will tell you, yes, it should help stop the spread of CWD, but still others say there's not enough data to prove it yet. Given though what we know about wolves picking out the sick, it stands to reason that they will at the very least slow the spread. But how much they do, we don't have the exact numbers yet. So anyway, at the last stakeholders meeting, nearly all the public there spoke out against ever having a wolf hunt in Colorado. And among the speakers were two professors of ecology and wildlife biology. Also, one of the authors of the bill, Prop 114, spoke and he said Prop 114 was worded so that there would not be a wolf hunt. So, who knows what will happen. Anyone who is watching this video, however, can contact Colorado Parks and Wildlife Stakeholders Group and voice your concerns. Yes, they do care about tourism and what people outside the state think. If you like this video and want to learn more about wolves, wolf dogs, and dogs, please hit the like button and subscribe.